Here's the beauty. Look over. If, if, if P were in uh, B, this would be positive. You'd be subtracting something. This would be smaller than B. So now what do we have to show? So, and then the other thing is we want, so we want to show, we want to show um, now that Q squared is less than 2, so we should find out what Q squared is. So maybe I'll give an extra line here of, uh, oh, I'm bad at that. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay. Um, 2P plus 2 over P plus 2. Okay, cool. So Q squared, oh, this is nice. I forgot how this is. Uh, is 2p plus 2 squared over p plus 2 squared, which is equal to, oh no, so I'm not going to study q. So I want to show q squared is, okay, so here's another trick. I want to show q squared is uh, less than 2. So it's a lot, it's just, this is generally a hard thing to show, anything is less than something else. What we usually say is something is greater than 0 or something less than 0. So let's actually calculate q squared minus 2. And I'm going to show you this is negative. Everyone agree that's the same? Cool. So this is this, which is just equal to 4p squared plus 4p plus no, AP. That, uh, AP plus 4 all over minus p squared plus 4p plus 2 over 4. Does that look right? That doesn't look right. Let's see, where I, where's my mistake? So it's 2, 4 2, times 2, 2, 2. What was that? 2 times this, thank you. 16, right? No, 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 no the second right. bracket. Minus 2 times. Minus 2 times that thing, right? Thank you. Now that looks right to me. <sighs> see, that's the other thing. I'm, I mess up a lot of the arithmetic. And I'll get, I mean, I'll get it right eventually. So you get 2p squared, you get a minus this middle term, then you get a minus this other term, so you get minus 4, all over p plus 2 squared, which is in fact equal to 2 p times p squared minus 2, all over p plus 2 squared. Alright? I'll let you catch up. What can you say about this? It's also negative, because p squared minus 2 is negative. And in fact, this is the beauty of it, right? This is why this example works. Now let's say if we had put p everywhere, well this would be positive, this would be still positive, this would be less than p, and this thing here would still be would be positive. Right? So this actually would work for the other case too. The, the only thing that's harder is this step, right? Because then you don't have this, this sandwich. But it's actually pretty obvious because if you realize here this is obviously positive, if you put a positive number in here, you're taking a positive number divided by a positive number. Yeah? But the point I'm saying is this is a perfectly valid proof. In fact, in fact, if I did this, I probably would just write, well, q squared minus 2 is equal to this. I would actually leave all this out of scratch paper. I was just including it so I wouldn't write too fast. But if I wrote this up as we see q squared minus 2 is this, and we see this, or maybe I would put this, and I'd be like, well, this is obviously greater than 0, no matter if p is greater than 0. And this thing here is off, uh, this is equal to this, which is obviously negative if that p is an a, and positive if p is an b. Thus, we have our proof. Well, the big point here is very pretty, and I just proved to you that neither A nor B have, you know, extremal elements as they approach root, as they approach root two, which is a big deal. It's different from Z. It's different from Z. It's different from Q. It's its own order. Sorry, it's different from Z. Different from R. It's its own thing. But what I wanted to point out, the most important thing, and this is how proofs are going to read. I know it seems terrifying right now, but there's a certain elegance to this stuff, right? It, it's not like, it's not always like linear algebra where, you know, there's like six words and you only know how to do five things, so you try one of those five things and it works. The problem is there's so many damn functions you guys know about. I mean, this isn't the first thing I would have tried either. But I think I could get there with 30 minutes of work. I would just have to think about it and be like, what kind of function do I want, you know? And the thing is, there's, this is a pretty specific example, just to show you, just, this is how analysis goes. Right? So then I conclude thus, or maybe I conclude thus, Q is bigger than P and Q is an A. And you're done. And we have it has when we get that, fine. Are we good? So welcome to analysis, I guess. Let's take a ten minute break and then I'll I'll continue with the lecture afterwards. Uh you guys can do as you please. Um if you have questions, feel free to ask them here too. Well that took a lot longer than I